Tonight, the old world disorder. Fears of a European default send shockwaves through the financial markets around the world and rattles Wall Street. Anthony Mason will have that story. As the president presses Congress to pass his jobs bill, Cynthia Bowers looks into whether it will spur small businesses to start hiring. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Good evening. For Americans worried about their jobs and retirement savings, the news today was not reassuring. The country's biggest bank, Bank of America, went public with plans to cut 30,000 jobs. And new fears that Greece might default ignited an early sell-off on Wall Street where the Dow had already lost 13% over the past seven weeks. The Dow was down as much as 167 points today. It rallied to close up more than 68 points. But it's a sign this could be another volatile week for your money, which is Anthony Mason's beat. Scott, Europe's debt crisis just won't go away, and fears are growing that it could take the global banking system and the U.S. economy down with it. European stocks tumbled nearly 4% overnight as a new wave of worry swept through the market. Europe is going through their Lehman Brothers 2008-style moment. The failure of Lehman Brothers here in 2008 caused a seizure in the global financial system. This time, it's Europe's financial giants that are confronting the bad loans on their books. The ratings agency Moody's reportedly is ready to downgrade France's three biggest banks because of their extensive holdings of Greek debt. There's a real risk that the European banking sector or certain parts of it are going to go bankrupt. Analyst Dan Greenhouse says investors are worried about contagion. Greece has been flirting with default for months, but Portugal, Ireland, Spain and Italy are also deeply in debt. And so if Greece defaults, if Portugal defaults, if, if heaven forbid, uh, Italy or Spain were to default, the ramifications throughout the region would be enormous. And beyond, the U.S. banking system would also feel the tremors, says economist Mark Zandi. Our own banks are very well capitalized. Uh, they are very profitable. They're doing quite well, uh, but they can't withstand a, a big problem uh, out of the European banking system. Our banking system is tethered at the hip with Europe's. Here's just how tightly tethered American banks have nearly $700 billion in direct exposure to European banks. They also have nearly $200 billion in exposure to the debt of Greece, Portugal, and Ireland. Anthony, is the problem a matter of uncertainty that the banks don't know who owns what? That's precisely the concern here, Scott, that, that no one's really sure who's exposed where and just how much. If you'll recall back in 2008, it was that very problem that led to a freezing of the whole credit markets. Banks wouldn't even lend to each other. They became so scared. Anthony, thank you. The president wants to spend nearly $450 billion to create jobs, and here's how he would pay for that. The president said today under his American Jobs Act, he would cut tax deductions for people earning more than $200,000 a year and for couples earning $250,000. He would increase taxes on those big investment companies called hedge funds and cut some tax breaks for oil and gas companies and for corporate jet ownership. The American Jobs Act is not going to add to the debt. It's fully paid for. I want to repeat that. It is fully paid for. It's not going to add a dime to the deficit. Next week, I'm laying out my plan not only to pay for this jobs bill, but also to bring down the deficit further. The Republican majority leader in the House, Eric Cantor, said today that he likes parts of the president's plan, but not others. In a news conference without cameras, Cantor said today, we want to focus on small businesses and the private sector because focusing on the stimulus and the public sector has not gotten us anywhere. Small businesses, of course, create most of the jobs in this country, so we sent Cynthia Bowers to one business in Illinois to find out whether the president's plan would create jobs there. Scott Bartmas and his partner started a fire and security alarm business six years ago. We've got 24 people. He's uh, nervous you know, about the direction you know, of the economy, board. but he's bullish about his business. He is turning away clients because he doesn't have enough cash to hire new technicians. What would be the difference in the number of people you can afford to hire versus what you would like to be able to hire? About six or seven people. And it will cut payroll taxes in half 
for every working American and every small business. Bartmus likes President Obama's proposal to cut the payroll tax in half. It could save the company more than $50,000 a year, enough to pay most of the cost of another worker. Small businesses will get a tax cut if they hire new workers or if they raise workers' wages. The proposed hiring tax credits would be a benefit too, but $4,000 for each new worker is not enough to send him on a hiring spree. The cost to hire anybody is going to be greater than I can foresee our government ever giving a tax credit for. What he wanted to hear most was something that is not in the president's plan. Bartmus wants banks to offer more credit to small businesses like his. We've propped up the banks and it's where, where, where is it going? I mean, we've, we've helped the ones that are too big to fail, and the ones that are too big to fail are, are too big to care. We didn't talk about how we're going to get the banks lending again. I didn't hear that at all. So Bartmus will keep the brakes on for now, because he needs around a million dollars to create all the jobs he'd like to. But if he can't get the financing, those jobs are years away. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Mundelein, Illinois. We'll be back in just a moment. Ten years after the crash of United Flight 93 in Pennsylvania, unidentified remains recovered from that crash site were buried today in a private service at the Flight 93 National Memorial. Forty people were killed in that part of the 9-11 attacks. And in New York, where more than 2,700 died, the National September 11th Memorial opened to the public today. And Jim Axelrod was there. Right now, New York is a city where the most personal feelings are playing out on the most public stage. Robert Peraza became the front page face of a city's grief yesterday when he found the name of his son Rob cut out of the bronze that rings the North reflecting pool. What do you think was so touching with so many people in terms of it resonating? In my opinion, it's a father trying to reach out for his son, for his soul, for his, for his life, for all that he has meant to us. Today, the rest of the world was allowed in, those not directly touched by 9-11, but still needing to heal. And how important is it that your feet can walk on that ground right now? I feel freedom again. New Yorkers like Molly Dunlap and John Lucas. I think it's given us hope again to open it up, to realize that we will go forward, that our country is resilient. Just on this first day, they came from 45 states and 33 countries. Alan Richard was here today, a firefighter from Grapevine, Texas. How important is it for the city that just regular folks can now step foot on this piece of property? I think they can gain an appreciation for exactly what happened that day for the people that worked there and the people that perished there. Barbara Parker came from California and left us with a lesson. Do you understand more about 9-11 having walked these grounds now than you I did prior? I'll never understand 9-11, ever. I'll never understand the hate that those people had for us. While memorials offer endless comfort, there can be limits to the understanding they provide. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, New York. And that's the CBS Evening News for tonight for all of us at CBS News all around the world. Good night.